Greetings from the apocalypse. Today I'm going to show you how to stretch things. That seems really simple, right? But it's something that can cause problems, so I promise you'll find this helpful. So I can't tell you how often uh, I come up to a student who's trying to stretch, you know, either a ring shank or a bezel or something like that, and this is what they're doing. They've got it like this, it's up in the air, and they're like, you don't have to make the dumb faces, I can't help it though. You know, they're hitting it like that up in the air. Now, basically that does nothing. Maybe get your arm a little exercise, which can't hurt, but that's not gonna make it stretch. If you have this set up so that what gives is the manager when you hit it. So, bing, you see what I'm saying? And even if I try to really clench real hard, which is something, by the way, I don't recommend in the studio, but even if I try really hard to hold this very tight, when I hit it, what happens? Just look at the top of the mandrel. What's, what's giving, what's moving is the mandrel. And that's not helping you stretch your ring or your bezel in any way. So this is what you actually wanna do. So I just have a little silver bezel in here, but like I said, the principles are exactly the same whether you're stretching a ring shank or a bezel, okay? So put it up against your bench like this. See what I mean? So that it's leaned up against there. So that back top edge of this is pressed against here. Now, when you go to stretch, you're gonna take your hammer. I mean, I'm using a leather mallet because I'm not trying to get this real beat up. I'm just trying to stretch it a little bit. Um, if you use a metal hammer, it's gonna leave marks and that could be like, could be more distortion than you're willing to accept. So, so I'm gonna take it, whoop, I'm gonna slip just to show you how to slip. And seen. You're going to hit downward like that. That way when you hit this, it's actually getting hit in the back as well. You know, the force is kind of getting distributed and it's driving the bezel or the ring shank down all the way around. So instead of whacking it in one spot and thinning that one spot a little bit, actually you're getting the whole bottom to stretch a little bit, which is what you really want. So it's much more efficient. Uh, now, what I usually do, another thing too, um, if you're stretching a ring and you're doing a ring mandrel and you have the sizes marked on there, you know, fine. But a lot of times people are using like a smaller bezel mandrel for a bezel. And I say, well, has it grown any? You know, do, you know, are you, are you getting there? And they're like, oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like they're hitting it. They have no idea whether it's gone anywhere or not. So what I normally do, use um, some high-tech equipment, magic marker. Um, when I first slide it on here and kind of roll it around and squeeze it down to the bottom, I just use my Sharpie and put a little mark right on there just like that. So then when I whack it, the line disappears. It just slides down a little bit. That's how you know how much you've stretched it, if you've stretched it. Um, and also, you know, the whole key, when you're stretching one of these little stinkers, it's not enough to stretch it a little bit and it's a little bigger, great. You need to flip this over and stretch the other side as well. Because, you know, a bezel mandrel is tapered, right? And you don't want your bezel to be a cone shape, you want it to be straight up and down. So whenever you do any stretching, and the same thing with the ring, unless the ring is very, very, very thin, I'm always gonna take it and flip it over and stretch the other side as well so that you don't start getting kind of a you know cone action going on. So having the mark on here, when I slide this off and flip it over, I can see exactly where my original mark was. I can whack it down a little bit, make a new mark, and that way I can just get the other side to match that same mark. So here's a little close up of leaning the bezel up against the bench. You can see that the back edge is pressed against the wood so that when I'm pressing forward, the force is moving the bezel downward. And once I have it in place, this is how I mark. I mark a line right along the bottom. That way, when it stretches a little bit, you'll easily be able to see the line get covered up. That's how you know for sure that it's actually moved and you're not just kind of wasting your time. See what I mean? Line disappeared, so you know you've got it stretched just a little bit. I can flip it over now 
and do the same thing on the other side and go right past the line. So, you know, it's a low tack. And, you know, the great thing about these magic markers is that, you know, it rubs right off of here. I mean, you could use an alcohol wipe if you wanted to remove it immediately, but honestly, most of the time I just leave it and it just kind of wears off just, you know, with your finger or whatever. Um, you need to try to take the guesswork out of these things. I mean, usually I stretch a little bit, mark where I've stretched it to, check it on the stone. Let's say I'm fitting my stone. Um, and if that's not enough, I can do a little more, but by making a mark on here, at least I know, you know, have I done something? Has it gone anywhere? I mean, one thing I will guarantee, if you're doing this like, you know, up in the air thing, you're probably not getting any stretching anyway, so there'd be nothing to mark. So use your high-tech equipment, your magic marker and your magic eyeballs, and just mark as you're stretching and brace it up against the bench like that and whack downward and you'll be shocked. You'll be stretching everything like that. That's it for today.